You wanted to see me, Mr. Burnback. Ah, yes, Alex. How are you? Good, sir. Very good. Good. How's Joan and the kids? Oh, they're great. Good. Thanks for asking. Is that your shipping ledger for this month? Yes, sir. May I? Thank you. Is there anything else, sir? Yes, there is. I'd like your keys. <laughs> My keys, sir? Hmm. Your master key and your office key. Why? Thank you. It's gonna be a little change. <laughs> You're not firing me, are you? <laughs> Let's just say I'm terminating your contract. No. We did our usual check of the phone logs, Alex. You made four calls last month to a man called Robert Plum. Robert Plum works for the FBI. No, sir, there's been a mistake. Somebody's been using my phone. Sure. Just make sure no one finds the body, would you? No! No, Mr. Burbach, please! You don't understand, please! Let me explain! So, how was school today, Princess? Fine. How was work? Work? Work was great. I made a killing today. Sit. Good dog. No problema. Ah, why don't you uh, put your money where your mouth is? How about I put food where my mouth is, huh? Loser buys, dinner for two, Chez Nouvelle. <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah, me and you, dinner at uh, Chez whatever. Hold on, hold on. Who said anything about me and you? All right, all right. You're on. Throw the dart. Step aside, my boy. Step aside. Excuse me. Captain Adam Fuller? Yeah. Special Agent Plum, FBI. I believe you're expecting me. Yeah, the chief warned me you were coming. Did he tell you what I'm here for? All he said was I was to give you whatever you wanted. I sense some anger about that. Yeah, well, I don't like writing blank checks, you know what I mean? Well, let me fill in the blanks for you. This your office? Yeah. You too. This is Kevin Burnback. He's responsible for the transport of an estimated five tons of crack every year. I've heard of him. Good. Then you know the man only surrounds himself with friends or family. I can't get a man inside his organization. And the only insider we have managed to make contact with seems to have vanished off the face of the earth. So what's that got to do with us? This is Burnback's teenage daughter, Lisa. We figure she's our only way in. Apparently, your unit has a reputation for having some first-rate undercover stud puppies. This one of your kids? Oh, absolutely. Can't you see the family resemblance? Special Agent Plum. McCann. You look like you'd be pretty handy with the ladies, McCann. Ah, well. Should be easy for you to win over Burnback's kid. Are you saying you'd like me to be friends with her? Actually, I was hoping for a little more than that. Wait a minute. Are you saying you want me to seduce this girl? I didn't use those words. But that is what you meant. That, uh, that would be the ideal scenario. 
You have been misinformed, Plum. I am not running a stud farm here. Didn't you say your orders were to give me whatever I wanted? Good. Now then, this operation is not to be discussed with anyone. Not your partner, not your best friend, not even your mommy. Understood? Yeah. Join ya. Mind? Are you kidding? <laughs> Any idea what the uh, rainbow mystery meat is today? It's the um, beefsteak surprise. Oh, well, the surprise must be that it got dipped in toxic waste. I mean, what are all these colors here? Actually, the rainbow effect is caused by the light being refracted by the natural juices of the meat and the oils used in the cooking process. It's kind of like when you shine light through a prism and you... You didn't really want an explanation of that, did you? No, it was very interesting. No, it wasn't. <laughs> My name is Tony Hendricks. I'm, uh, transferring here from Jersey. Lisa Burnback, resident Mr. Wizard. <laughs> Mr. Wizard. He's this guy on TV. He explains things like how they get the rainbow effect and the beefsteak surprise. He makes the most mundane things really interesting, except he kind of has a propensity to ramble on about things until they get boring enough. Kind of like what I'm doing right now. I gotta go. It was nice meeting you. Oh, wait, wait, can't can you? Nice to meet you. Hey, let go of the badge. Pay me my money first. I told you I'm out of cash. Just let me go in. I'll cash a check. Fine, then you leave the bag here. No! How do I know you won't drive off? Hey, how do I know you won't stiff me for my 20 bucks? Because I am an honest woman. Yeah, well, no. I'm an honest man. Whoa, hey, hey, how much does she owe you here? Uh, 20 bucks plus tip. Mackie. Uh, Sam, here's 25. Sorry for the hassle. No problem. I don't believe this. Well, you're welcome. How did you know I was coming to town? I didn't. Why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't want you to know. Well, come on. Where are you going? To my place. It's just a half a block down the road here. Uh-uh, no way. I am not going back to your place. I already have a room here. Well, come on. For how many hundreds of bucks a night? The company's paying. Good. Well, we'll pass that savings along to the consumer. Come on. Anthony McCann, let go of the suitcase now. I paid 25 bucks for it. Now. Well, can I call you? What for? Oh, well, come on. We'll have dinner or something. No, thanks. Why not? Because I didn't want to see you. Oh, come on, I thought we'd stay friends. You dumped me, Mac. I wouldn't call it. No, 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 no. I didn't dump you. You dumped me, remember? Your career came first. So did yours. You moved a million miles away so you could keep being a cop. And you didn't come with me so you could sell mayonnaise. I don't sell mayonnaise. Yes, you do. I happen to be the director of marketing for Pilsen Foods. Which makes mayonnaise. That's the There you go. You're belittling your work. I'm not belittling your work. I just think you could go sell mayonnaise anywhere. Pilsen is based in Newark. So sell ketchup. We have a big ketchup company here. Why would I want to be here? Because it's safer here. It's less expensive here. There's more things to do here. And the guy you used to want to marry lives here. And he misses you a lot. Don't make Next me go through this again, Mackie. Both know it won't work. Next person, please. Speak for yourself. Yeah, I need to check in. Samantha Billings? Uh, Ms. Billings, I'm afraid we don't have a room for you. What? I had a reservation. 
My apologies, ma'am, but uh, reservations are held until 10 o'clock. After that, we give the room away, unless you put a credit card hold on it. There has to be a room. No, ma'am, we have a consumer electronics convention here. It's filled the hotel. Um, what about other hotels? Is there anything close by? Most of them are probably full, too. I know where there's a vacancy. Come on. Hotel. Uh oh. Sorry, the maid hasn't cleaned up yet. <laughs> no problem. This is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's only temporary until I can afford something a little bigger. You said it was a two room apartment. It is two rooms. It's uh, this room and the bathroom. It won't work, Mackie. <sighs> Why not? Because I'm not sharing a bed with you. I'm not asking you to. Look, you can have the bed. I'll, uh, I'll sleep on the floor. Tomorrow night we'll trade. <laughs> Deal. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, Fuller. Uh, yeah, Chief, thank you for calling me back, sir. I... I'm doing fine, sir, just fine. Look, I just wanted to talk to you about this FBI man. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I did know Dean Barry. He was a fine cop. Yeah, I was sorry to hear about his death, too, sir. Yes, sir. Listen, sir, the reason I called was to ask you about... about one of Kevin Burnback's men. Are you sure, sir? No, no, let me guess. You can't tie him to burn back in court. Yeah, that son of a... Yes, sir. Oh, we'll get him, sir. You can count on that. He spilled chili all over my blouse. Ah, oh, that was nice of him. Yeah. He even took my blouse and had it cleaned. He was a real gentleman. Ma, nah, it was obviously a ploy to get to know him. Well, if it was, it worked. I got to know him real well. How did you like him? Good night, Mackie. So I dip it in your cold water. I'm sorry. Here, take my shirt. I did not mean to do that. I'm sorry. Serious? Here, take it. Go change. It's the least I can do. I'm sorry. You did what? I spilled spaghetti on her. Great. What girl could resist that? Well, it worked before. Is that right, Casanova? You know what I think? I think you're intentionally sabotaging this operation to assure its failure. Look, I think this operation stinks, all right? But I didn't sabotage anything. Kid, you like it here in Captain Kangaroo's unit? Yeah. Then you better hope your little stunt work, or I'll have you out of here and back in uniform before you know what happened. I'm shaking in my boots. Hi. 
Hi. Hi. You beat up that bag every night? Most nights I do it for exercise, but sometimes it takes the place of a person. Is there any particular person you had in mind? Yeah. Want to talk about it? No. Okay. I'm going to go change. Don't turn around. It's this FBI jerk who's in charge of the case. Why is an FBI agent in charge? Because the FBI already blew the thing. Now they want us to take care of it. They couldn't solve the case, but they want you to do it? Yeah. <laughs> Talk about pressure. Tell me about it. The worst thing is not the case. It's the way this pencil neck jerk wants me to handle it. All right, you can look now. What's wrong with the way he has you handling it? Gosh, I miss you, Sam. What? Seems like the only women I meet these days are cops or felons. You must have women waiting in line. No. Well, you have your job. Yeah. I hope a lot of kids in trouble, Sam. I, I take a lot of dangerous people off the streets, and every time I come home, I wish I had someone there I could tell about it, you know? It's kind of like if there's no one there to share it with, doesn't exist. Yeah, I can relate. I doubt it. When I got my promotion last month, I figured what more could a girl my age want, right? Successful career, 60 grand a year. Nowhere to go but up. Celebrated all day long. And then I came home to an empty apartment. And it was like it all went away. I cried all night. Damn you, why did you have to show up outside of that hotel? <sighs> well, maybe someone up there is trying to tell us something. I doubt it. Are you going to break my heart again? Maybe. Are you going to break mine? Perhaps. Then maybe we should stop right now. Yeah. Maybe we should. women have you spilt food on? Ow, 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 they all fall what? for it like I did? What? What? What, what are you... What?
What are you talking about, Sam? This is what I'm talking about, Mackie. <sighs> Sam, that's a part of my case I'm working on with the FBI. I'm not allowed to talk about it, okay? You're not allowed to talk about it or you don't want to? I'm not allowed. <sighs> what kind of a case could possibly require you to spill food on some woman? Or is it your job to seduce some woman? Sam, I told you, I'm not allowed to talk about it. I swear, it's a part of my case, okay? You have to trust me on this. Why should I trust you? Because if I was seeing another woman, I'd let you know. You would? Yeah, I'm allowed to see other women. We're not engaged anymore, remember? You're right. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, are you still a big seafood buff? Yes. Yeah, and I'm gonna take you to the very best seafood restaurant in the city tonight, if you want. The best? The best. Then I want. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Listen, uh, I got your shirt clean here. Oh, thank you. Uh, I washed yours myself. Oh, uh, you didn't need to do that. No, it's no problem. Since it's a cotton and polyester blend, it was really easy to iron. But you tried to iron one of my dad's old cotton shirts. There's your shirt. Ah, uh, listen, I feel really bad about spilling all that food over you. I'd like to make it up to you. How about dinner? Oh, I can't. Well, why not? I never said when. Well, no, it doesn't matter when. See, it, it's just sort of this family thing. We, we always have dinner together. It's like an unspoken rule every night at 6.30. It's the only time the whole family can be together. Well, that's kind of nice, actually. You want to come? Excuse me? You, you want to come to dinner at my house? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> tonight? I don't understand. I thought we were going out tonight. Well, we were, but now I have to work. In that outfit? Well, what's wrong with this outfit? Nothing. I've just never seen you get so dressed up to go to work. Well, I have to have dinner with a suspect. <laughs> Must be a pretty suspect. He is tall, 50-ish, and going gray. Not quite my type. And this guy's so important, it couldn't wait until tomorrow? Look, Sam, this guy's one of the biggest drug runners in the state. The FBI couldn't get past his front door, and I'm invited to dinner. This is a major breakthrough. You should be happy for me. I'm trying. Hey, I'm sorry about tonight. I was looking forward to it just as much as you were. I'll make it up to you. We'll go out tomorrow night, I, I promise. Yeah. I was planning on cooking tomorrow night. That sounds good. You better be there. Ooh. Go on. <laughs> Come on in. Thank you. This is great. What, is your dad famous or something? No, he's just a businessman. Oh, it must be some business. He imports cotton from South America. Really? And that's what buys all this? Come on, he must import something else, like coffee or tea or something. <laughs> Got enough on my hands with cotton, thank you. Kevin Burbank. Ah, nice to meet you, sir. Tony Hendricks. Hey, Tony, my wife will be out in a minute. Please, sit. Can I get you something? Beer, maybe? Uh, no, thanks, sir. I don't drink. Of course. It's good you don't drink. I hope you're that sensible about drugs. I never touch them. It's good, too. Wouldn't want you around my daughter if you did. Daddy! What? Just trying to make sure you're seeing a decent boy. What's wrong with that? No, well, I can understand that. Can you? Uh, sir? Can you understand just how much I don't want my daughter hurt? Yes, sir. 
Good. Well, let's have dinner, should we? Uh, look, I'd like to see you again. Really? Yeah. Maybe we could have dinner again sometime. This time, just you and me. Are you serious? You really want to? Of course I'm serious. Okay, how about tomorrow night? Oh, I'm not so sure I can make it tomorrow night. I I'll cook for you. My parents are going out. We could have the whole house to ourselves. <laughs> okay, tomorrow night it is. This is going to be a dream. I'll, uh, I'll call you, okay? Okay. So how was your date with the devil last night? It was good. It went fine. Don't you have any real knives? Well, I haven't had a real need for them until just now. I noticed. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? The only food in this place is frozen dinners. Yeah, well, you better get used to frozen dinners if we're going to be living together. Wow. Who said anything about living together? I did, just now. One step at a time, Mackie. OK. What's the first step? Well, first of all, one of us has to relocate. I can't move back to Newark, Sam. Not unless I want more bullets in my back. I know. That's why I set up an interview tomorrow with Case Ketchup. You <laughs> don't go getting all excited. Just an informational interview. They might not even want me. Are you kidding me? They'll want you. It's nice to spend my evenings with you again. <clears throat> so, what do you want to do now? Uh, I thought maybe we could just sit here and digest for a little while. You want to see the rest of the house? Uh, sure, yeah, I'd love to. Great. Let's start with the bedroom. OK. <laughs> oh, man, this place is amazing. Feel this fur. It's the softest thing you'll ever touch. Ooh, it is nice. What is it? Black leopard. Black leopard? I've never heard of black leopard fur before. <laughs> That's because it's really rare. Daddy had it brought in from Africa. It's nice. It really is. I've always wondered what it would be like to make love on it. Actually, I've always wondered what it would be like to make love anywhere. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you want to show me the rest of the house now? Why don't we stay here? Lisa, I don't think we should, OK? My parents won't be home till late. That's not it. It's just that. Don't you like me? Of course I like you. Well, then what's the problem? Tony, I, I've never done anything like this before. I always thought I'd want to wait until a guy came along that I could really be in love with. Oh. I am off this case, all right? You're off this case when I say you are. I'm messing with this girl's head. It isn't right. Her father supplies half the crack to this city. You're going to talk to me about what's right? Yeah, well, that's her father, not her. Well, how do you know she's not involved? Maybe she pushes this stuff at school. <laughs> Come on, Plum. you got to be kidding me. The girl probably doesn't even know what crack looks like. Look, man, you can pull all the strings you want, bust me down to uniform, get me fired for all I care, but I am off this case, capiche? He's off this case when I say he is. Not when you say. Sorry. You want to 
want to tell me what this is all about? Lisa Burnback asked me to have sex with her. Did you blow your cover? No, but I wish I had. Maybe I wouldn't feel like such dirt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You didn't... No. I told her I wasn't feeling well, that we'd do it another time. Captain, I like this girl. She's a good kid. I don't want to hurt her. Sounds kind of unavoidable. This is all wrong. I mean, it's not like we're using a crook to get a crook here. Look, at the risk of sounding like plum, sometimes we have to sacrifice one good guy in order to save many. What does that mean? It means that maybe hurting one girl's feelings doesn't compare to all the people that are dying out there because of burnback. You saying I can't get off this case? I'm telling you I'd rather you stay on it. But I'll take you off if you want. I'll stick it out. So anyway, they said that they needed somebody just like me and that they were impressed by my work at Pilsen. Ooh, so the job is yours if you want it. If I want it. Are you sure you can put up with me? Mm, I think so, yes. Yes. <laughs> Tony? Lisa. <clears throat> Hi, how are you? Lisa. This is uh, Samantha. She's a friend of mine from back home. She just didn't tell me. I thought I'd made it clear. Nobody hurts my daughter. Nobody. <sighs> Sam, it's not what it looks like. She's a part of my... Oh. What it was worth, that guy was the drug smuggler I've been trying to nail. What about the girl? You've been trying to nail her, too? No, she was his daughter. Who you've been seeing a little on the side. That was my assignment, Sam. <sighs> You're telling me that it's your job now to seduce young girls? Look, the FBI tried every other way to get this guy. The girl was the only way left. Oh, so you just volunteered for the job. Huh? No, I didn't volunteer. I was assigned the job. Part of the being a cop is to follow instructions. Even if they stink. Look, Sam, I don't want you to leave like this, OK? If I had the time, I'd try to talk you out of it. But right now, I have to deal with an angry drug dealer who probably wants me dead. Oh, God. What are you going to do? He doesn't know where I am. Look, I'll be all right. For what it's worth, I want you to stay, Sam. I got to go. You sure the case is really blown, Mac? <sighs> the girl hates my guts, Captain. Maybe you can make up, take her a dozen roses. Trust me, there's no chance in hell. <laughs> Did you see or hear anything that might give us probable cause for a search warrant? Nope. Think hard, Mac. Captain, I have. The house is as clean as an operating room. Was there any drugs, uh, paraphernalia, maybe? No. <sighs> anything else, anything, something that might point to another crime? No, sir, I'm sorry, there's nothing. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do either of you know if uh, the black leopard is an endangered species? I think most of the big cats are. Wasn't there some kind of law that says you can't bring a fur of an endangered species back into the US? <laughs> Yeah.
Yes. Yeah, Plum Fuller, listen, uh, we've got nothing down here. How about you? Just the fur. That ought to put him away for about two hours. So you think we should call it a night? Are you sure you looked everywhere? Yeah. Yeah, call it. Well, any more ideas? Yeah, I think we should string him up by his uh, thumbs. Who, Burnback? No, Plum. You think Burnback is clean? No, but I uh, don't think we should mess up this girl's life anymore until we're sure we have a reason to do it. That's what I think. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it. Let's call it a day, huh? So what do you think we got here, Mr. Burnback? Kevin Burnback, you're under arrest for the transportation of illegal narcotics what? into the United States. No! No! You have the no. right to remain silent. You give up the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak with an attorney and to have the attorney present doing questioning. You so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you without charge before questioning. Now get him out of here. Let's go. Busted him. He's in jail. So he can't come after you? Not likely, no. <sighs> Thank God. So, I guess you're not staying. I don't think so. Are you still mad about that girl in the restaurant? Not in the way you think. I was really ready to try this juggling act, Mackie. Dealing with my career and dealing with us at the same time. But? But I wasn't ready to deal with your career. You don't have to. It's my department. No, it's not. It's mine. I'm the one that has to deal with the fact that seducing other women is part of your job. I'm the one that has to live with a guy who pretends He's in high school still. I'm the one that has to lay awake at night, wondering if you're just late or if you're dead. First of all, seducing women is not a part of my job, usually. Secondly, we're not always in high school. Sometimes those are just symptoms, Mackie. The real disease is that being a cop is not just a career, it's a whole lifestyle. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Mackie. I always. 
his will. Me too.